Right. Hello, everybody. And I am so thrilled to have this lady on my channel. This is Nikki Allen, and I'm sure that you will have seen her. She's exploded all over YouTube in the past month. She went on the Alex Ferrari show. And if you've not seen that, it is Next Level Soul podcast. And this is where I found Nikki. I watched the whole video and was felt so much compelled to contact her, which I don't really do, as I've just been explaining before this. And I thought, well, OK, in for a pound, it either's going to work or it's not. And here we are. So I am so, so thrilled. So Nikki has an amazing background. Um, she's one of the UK's top psychic mediums. Her background is in, she's done uh, books, uh, lots of magazines. You've been around for quite some time doing all of this, haven't you? Don't uh, mention the 30 years. Don't mention yeah. the 30 years. I don't know how <laughs> so when I watched your interview with Alex, I mean, obviously it was amazing and all of everything you've done, all of your capabilities. And I just felt compelled to speak to you on a different level. Now, if anybody wants to go back, because we're not going to repeat all of this that Nikki did with on Alex's show, it goes about how she started, what she went through and everything else. And I will put the link to that on the bottom of this YouTube video. So you can go back and watch that because we're not gonna go all of, over that today. So the reason that Nikki and I got together, although she doesn't know this. <laughs> I thought you were just a stalker. I'm waiting for the police to turn up at your address. <laughs> so you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> but, as I said, I was compelled to contact her and I didn't know why. And if anybody has been on my channel before and I will have said that you go, you trust the process, you go with your intuition and you see where it leads. So this is where my intuition put me. And it was like they went, OK, do this. So I followed and I did. And this is where we are. And I didn't know why. And it's always brilliant because at some point you are shown, it's put in front of you and then you go, aha. <laughs> and I was just saying to this, to Nikki, uh, that a video came on of Nikki's and it happened to have Metatron in the title. And I was like, okay, I really need to watch this. So I watched the video and then Nikki started talking about a book that she'd written and it had a lot to do with Metatron. So I went, OK, that's where we're going then. I understand now. Now, for those people that have either been on my channel or, or my website, they will wonder what the hell I'm talking about because I don't <laughs> talk about Metatron. There is nothing on there that actually says my relationship to it. Oh. So it's being kept very quiet. So this was, to me, this was very interesting. And I thought, right, OK, Nikki, where's this going? And I'd just like to know where, how, why on earth you have this connection, if you don't mind going back from where it started, how it came in, the assistance, why the book, because I am just so interested. It's not the most romantic thing, I'm going to yeah. say now. <laughs> I'll tell you that now and you know for people that don't know me everything that comes to me is not from me looking it up or reading it it's all completely organic so when angels choose to come and introduce themselves I've never heard of them before right so you'll know if you go back and watch the interview if you know me I, I spent five years in bed um after a road accident that I had that left me with ME and fibromyalgia and it was like a awakening. It was like a rebirth um, situation. That's that book, if you want to know, the, me, myself and I. So during that time, <laughs> I had archangels come and visit me. And I knew they were real um, eventually because I was like, whatever, you don't exist. During my imagination, my two little dogs, Mia and Teddy, literally used to go mental as soon as their energy manifested into the room. Okay. 
So I've had this thing where I needed purple around me all the time. So I, you know, I had Raguel come to me at some point, and then um, I, I, I had to have purple. So I had amethyst. I was wearing purple night shirts because I was in bed, and I just loved purple. I went through this whole stage of loving purple. You know, like the Cadbury's chocolate um, purple color. Yes, I, I literally, rich. I have a top upstairs that I went to put on. I, I felt I got to put purple on. Oh my god! So right did I. Purple. Do you know the reason why I didn't wear it? Yeah, I'll go and grab it now just to prove it, but I won't. But you just have to believe me. I couldn't get. It's I couldn't too bloody boobs. tight. I, I just couldn't get the boobs in it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 literally, no. I'm looking. I'm thinking they're not going to send you boobs anyway. So I put the angels thing on, right? And I thought. So there was a big. Do you know there's a big split between your boobs? I'm yeah. like, oh hell no! I've put so much weight. I have. I have literally then. got the bright purple top oh. there. I put it on and I oh, took it off. Hey. Seriously, if Darren was in it, I'd say go and fetch it. But literally, I, yeah. I swear on everything I know and love, I was going to yeah. put the bright purple top on. It's a really beautiful collar. And I put it on. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So, HRT has got a lot, a lot to bloody explain. I'll tell you that now. So I was going to wear that. And then yeah. right next to it, because I'm really sad, right? I love, well, I'm not sad. Yeah, I'm a bit anal. I'm a Virgo. I have colour codes in my wardrobes, right? And this, which is pretty much purple pinky, right, which I love this this sweater, was next to it. And I thought, well, at least that's going to fit because it's stretchy. So girls watching this, isn't it a pain in the bum? And literally, I've not been this heavy since, well, since my accident when I was in bed. It's unbelievable what, what your hormones do. But anyway, as we digress, talking about boobs and things not fitting, that's winning. That's the synchronicity right there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, so anyway, um, so I loved all this purple stuff and I, I just, I was still very disillusioned because I was really severely damaged from this accident and my prognosis was really, really horrific. I wasn't going to get out of bed, I wasn't going to walk in, blah, blah, blah. So all these angels decide to come in and say, don't worry, Nikki, we're going to bring you back to normality. And I'm like, don't worry, I don't care. I'm not interested. <laughs> I was really rude, right? Anyway, so this, um, yeah, I've got to wish you just back wish you mm -hmm. back to about 2005 right and um I had a vision of me going to the halls of learning I didn't know they were called that I had no clue I walked through this hallway there was this checkered flooring and I think this is in the book and oh no it's in rise and fall I think and I literally there's all these gold plaques to my right okay and I'm thinking Nikki note who's on them note who's on them because those are names so you can prove it's real because I always want to prove everything's real it's the detective in me from when I was a copper right so I thought right Harold Truman to my shame sorry if there's US people watching this I didn't have a clue who Harold Truman was but I thought remember that remember that so then I walked past this most colossal statue of this woman and this man it's like this big bronzy glimmering statue and then I heard the voice the Adam and the Eve right and I'm like okay and then I walked straight up to these doors bearing in mind it took me six months to get to this place in meditation and finally my granddad and um, one of my guys said yeah off you pop go in there doors opened and there's this bloke and he looks like <laughs> you can tell I'm a Harry Potter fan Dumbledore right he looked like Dumbledore and he's got half moon glasses, big white beard, and he looks up and he's got these purple robes on. And he goes, Ah, oh, come here, Nicola. They call me Nicola up there. I hate it. Right. So he goes, Come here. So I sat down and he had this and he was scribing in this weird symbol stuff, right? Oh my in this God. Huge <laughs> book. I know. I know you're going to go, oh. Right. And it's this huge book, book, and I mean huge, with gold, like spike, gold pages at the end, gold gilt pages. And then he shuts it and goes boom like that. And the whole place goes, and I'm like, Jesus, it's like um, thunderclap, right? He turns it around and written on the front in gold is a Kashik, right? And I've got mm. a clue what that is. I haven't got a clue. Yeah. So he then pushes the book to me and then the book just magically opens, right? And he gives me the quill. And I'm not going to lie, at the time I thought, oh my God, I'm signing my soul away. This is like real. I'm, I'm, I'm like with the devil or something, right? That's something a bit panicky. So I'm like, and there's no small print. What do you want me to sign? I want to see the small print. Do you know what I mean? And um, so he said, congratulations, it's now time for you to have access. So I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, mate, right? He didn't say his name or anything, right? 
So in the end, I thought, well, in for a penny. You know what? I've taken ages getting here. My granddad's by the door in spirit. My guide's there. It can't be anything dodgy. And he looks lovely, this man. And he's got blue eyes that depict as an angel, right? So I sign in this weird sim- symbols. I haven't got a clue. And it's all in gold. And then he goes, I'm so pleased for you. And then he looked at the door like, off you, off you go. And I'm like, all right, rude. So I have come out the door, right? gone past the hallway and my granddad's gone oh my god I'm so pleased for you you can now you've got access to a Kashyyyk and I'm like I haven't got a clue what that means either and then he took me to this fountain um and said that I could swirl my finger in this fountain which is where the, the seraphim are in the celestial garden and I can look into people's souls I'm like that's great so when I come out of it and about six months later I was writing part of my book um which turned out to end up being rise and fall. And this, as I say, it never, it never went out because of my accident and everything else that happened. And I said to my mate, Ian, at the time, he was, he literally read everything there was to read on spiritual philosophy. He was, he knew everything, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. So I was just writing it because we were, we were going to do a show or something. We were traveling quite far and he was part of the crew. And I said, um, oh, well, I'm just going to run this by you. So I described it and he went, are you joking me, Nikki? So I went, no. It goes, you've signed the Akashic Records in Aramaic. You do know that, don't you? I went, no. And he goes, well, you know who Harold Truman is? I went, no, I just wrote him a soul journal. I thought I'd just pop it in. He goes, pop it in. He went, oh, my God. He said, you've been in the halls of learning. You've gone and signed the Akashic Records. And he said, and that Harold Truman was a president that obviously had access to the Akashic Records during his human life experience as Harold Truman. I'm like, oh, right, OK. So I'm like, right, and he's like, she doesn't deserve this. And he was so diligent at reading up stuff. But he never mentioned the angel's name, and I didn't either right. because at the time I was more about the afterlife I really mm-hmm. wasn't worried about the crystal palace and the laser frequency and angels this is a whole new ball game that came in after my mm-hmm. rebirth after the accident yeah. right? so then what happens is we now whiz back to I think it was 2015 2016 and the, <laughs> so this purple energy right and suddenly this huge giant angel comes into the ether and the dogs are going mental, barking wah, 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 at it. And I'm like, oh, all right. I am Metatron. And I actually said, I actually said, no, you're not. That's a transformer. <laughs> it sounded like, I am Metatron. I'm going to fight for the universe. You're like, Metatron, I'm not going to It's a rubbish name. It's not happening. And then suddenly he flashed me back all of those years to him looking up at me, signing the book. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, that's who you are. He goes, yes, that's who I am. And that's what you need to put in your book. I am Metatron. I am the scribe of God, among other things that I do. And that is who you met, who you connected with back in TikTok time 2006. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, wow. Okay. And he said the reason why he was blending with me is because I needed to get Earthwalkers out. Now, Earthwalkers, I hadn't used his name. I didn't know what to call him in the book initially when I wrote it. He came in to say, you must say my title that humans will recognise, Metatron. And I'm like, okay. So I wrote Metatron and I thought, oh, in this book, I'll say about the book in a minute. And I Googled it and I thought, oh, my God, it's like a new age angel. He is like totally real totally the scribe of god and everything he said about helping special children and light children star children star seeds um you know, autistic children blah, blah 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 helping people to find their path and light workers urging them forward all of this and i've speak I, I connect with him many many times and the thing is is some people you know they think oh how can you connect with angels easily everybody can they're there waiting to be invoked waiting for you to give them permission and then you can start a relationship with them just like spirit people so they're to me they're an almighty power they know i'm cheeky about them but they are the most impressive most magnificent presences i presences is that a word no it's not but it's a nicky word and i just am in awe of the power of the signs and synchronicity they can bring 
So when the book, I wrote the book after a download, which I thought was a really long dream back in 2014. I can't remember, I think it was it, February the 9th, 2014, Sunday. And I'll never forget it because I was homeless because I'd lost my home, I'd lost my holiday home, I'd lost everything after the road accident. I was homeless and staying at my friend's house, really severely ill. And she'd woke me up at eight o'clock and I thought, ah, that I was having the best dream ever. It was so lucid and so amazing. And I was flying over the desert in Iraq, right? And it was just this most incredible adventure. And then I thought I might as well get up. And then the voice said, go back to sleep. And it was Metatron. I'm like, okay. So I go back to sleep. And then I wake up crying and feeling the most amazing at midday. And that's the end of this adventure I had, right? So minimum it was a four hour depth so it wasn't a dream because we only dream in seconds so it was obviously a download right Mm. so I literally like a crazed woman every time because with the conditions sometimes I wake up my eye closed sometimes I couldn't talk walk move hold things it's just horrific condition that I thought was just a bit of tightness it isn't it's horrific but I managed to get that book written in three months because it was the most incredible story I was so passionate. I was convinced it would be in Hollywood. I was convinced that all of the characters I'd I'd written about, um, all the actors that were going to play them, all the rest of it. And what really spoke to me is later on, when I thought I'd pop back to it, I lost my confidence. I was really poor and I had a lot to go. It wasn't the right time to send it out. And when I started Googling the names that have been given to me, they all exist in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Sophia you know, who was um, in cohorts with Lucifer, if you like, if you go to the biblical terms. Anyway, they all make sense and they all represent certain things. So basically, the premise of the book um, is about, it is the most incredible story of the high cults, including Metatron, all the archangels, the omnipresence, or other people may call him God, whatever you want to call him, the source of the universe, and galactic energies from different planets all meet together and say, Earth's in crisis, it's dying. The people on it are killing it. The people on it are killing each other. Animals are being abused. Plants, nature is being abused. Archangel Air is kicking off, doing tsunamis, earthquakes, blah, 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 blah. We need to decide if we're just going to decimate the planet or we're going to save it. So God, the omnipresence, basically says, I'm going to create some happenings and go against complete laws of the universe. And we're going to try and wake up humankind and love will be able to conquer all that's happening. If they don't wake up, though, we'll just flood it again. So the laws of the universe are changed and rewritten by Metatron to create happenings with the aid of some humans. I don't want to give too much away with some aid of some humans on the earth plane to wake us up on a colossal sign from God, if you like. And people were like, what the hell's happened? And then they start to wake up to the fact that they are at a critical level and the planet is going to be going anytime soon. And um, at the time, I was like, it's a bit dramatic, isn't it? It's a bit dramatic. <laughs> and um, some of the things I actually wrote about, and it's, it's at the moment, it's two books. It might go into three. It's a series. And when I look back on it, I'm like, it's a bit spooky because it actually does predict COVID and it predicts um, ter- a terrorist incident that took place. And there's lots of things that have happened in those nine years for real. So I thought, wow, this is incredible. I briefly mentioned it once on a video. And so and then I got literally hundreds of emails from people saying, where's this book? We can't find it. I said, oh, well, I'm not publishing it. They went, yes, you are. I'm like, "Mm, shall I? And then I went up there and said, what do you want me to do with this? And they said, the time is right. The time Mm -hmm. is right to do this now. And I went, really? They went, yes, do it now. People need to wake up. So I'm like, okay. But then because it's so fundamentally it's a massive wake-up call to humankind however for the market it's going to be deemed spiritual fiction and they told me we would I would bring more people in by making it fictional rather than fact so then I thought oh I'm gonna do it so I literally on the word of obviously loads of people asked and I went up and they said do it so I sent it to my editor 
who did my last book, right? He's brilliant. And he said, you make me sick. So I said, why? And he said, most people either stick to a genre of nonfiction or fiction. He goes, you smashed it in fiction as well. He goes, how have you done it? How have you created these characters? He goes, absolutely mind-blowing. He said, I just couldn't stop reading it. I said, you're only saying that because you're my editor. He goes, absolutely not. If I'd be honest, if it wasn't going to be a runner, I wouldn't do it. And I'm like, wow, thank you. And he just said, it's just, it's like someone wrote it for you. And actually, I have to say this, when I was actually writing it, it was like I was writing someone telling me what to write. Mm-hmm. so one day when I was well enough I went to my friends well I'm going to channel Julianus who's my main soul guide and I said ask him who's helped me with the book just ask him and funny enough I was living in a Victorian lodge don't ask me how I got living in there because it was a miracle because I had no money managed to go there in a cemetery it used to be the cemetery keepers lodge right and how funny is that didn't see a soul though not one person not one spirit person and um I came out and I went, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Because he won't tell me. I keep asking him. And they said he was quite clear, Elizabeth Bowen. I'm like, right, okay. And I had all this shabby chic stuff around me as well, which is not me. And all Victorian-y stuff, you know. I I was obsessed with it during writing this book and all the different colours of the angels that were coming in. And um, we Googled her. She was a Victorian supernatural writer in her day. Very famous. Yeah. And then we also have just down the road, Agatha Christie's home, right? And it's part of the National Trust now. It is stunning. It's by the River Dart and it's got hundreds of acres of the most stunning gardens, all different types of genre of garden from tropical to just natural English woodland to Japanese gardens. It is, it's a day out. They've got Mm. a cafe there. I love, love, love going there. And I'll never forget it. I walked into her. I'm going goosey now. I walked into her bedroom, right? And she had. She's got. She used to have a bookcase, two bookcases either side of the chimney breast. And as I walked in, I saw a movement on the bookshelf, and I thought that's a bit weird. It's like just dropped out. And as I went up to the book, book by Elizabeth Bowen. Wow. And it was hanging out of the bookcase. I'm like, wow. So Metatron has deemed that it's the right time for me to put this book out Um, because in the nine years that I've written it, it has never been so relevant. And even Denver, my editor, said, he goes, despite the fact that you're going to put this out as, you know, know, um, fantasy, spiritual fantasy, he said, everybody will get the fundamental message that we need to wake up and start being responsible for ourselves, each other, and realise that by sending love across the planet is palpable, it will reach where it needs to target. And this is where all this channeling come in. You know, I, I wasn't planning doing that on my YouTube channel at all. And then suddenly you're going to um, talk, you're going to repeat exactly what we say with, the, with that rolling. I went, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Because uh, one, I might get it wrong. Two, people are going to think, whatever. And they went, we do not care, do not put ego into it I'm like all right so they said just press the button and talk what we tell you I'm like okay and wow the first one was on the Palestinian and and Israel war and that just went bananas no I saw it yeah Yeah. it's about 115 views now and it really hit home and so I thought wow this is really powerful and incredibly I predicted it's in the second book about portal mediums bringing word to leaders bringing word to humankind directly from the source and I wrote it's fiction and then I sat there the other day and thought oh my god I'm doing exactly what I wrote nine years ago I'm being a portal medium and I talk about people enabling the portal mediums right so I've created a character who's a reporter and an online influencer and it's like that's what you do that's what everybody who's doing the interviews do that's what Alex Ferrari's doing and it's all part of this grand reset scheme Mm -hmm. for us to turn everything on its bum and reset and get this balance of love, spirituality, humility back onto the planet, which it's so lacking in. Yes. How big is that? And my dad, he came and visited me in 20, it was 2014 or 2013, can't remember the years now, it's all a scramble. And um, it's in there as well. He obviously knew I was going to go for the biggest crisis of my life. Obviously been in bed for five years, I was suicidal most days. 
and um, he came and visited me in full form. I know it's never going to happen again. He sat there like a normal human being for five minutes. It was the most incredible time of my life ever, sitting with my dad that had passed when I was nine years old. And I was like, I can't believe I'm here. And he said, amongst other things, he said, the biggest change will be you will work on the most deepest and profound level you could ever ever imagine in a completely different way and it will help humankind I'm like no what I'm doing is proving the afterlife I don't get that and it's completely <laughs> right because the afterlife bit is really in the background I've done 30 yeah. years of that I know I've done the cold enough but I <laughs> do you know what I mean I've done 30 years of giving people readings and to me now I do not absolutely under no circumstance you know um bring that down to a level of old oh, readings are just rubbish but i find that readings are like a plaster over a big wound they they heal for a little while but i need i feel this passion in me to help people find their own paths to spiritually heal to open their own energy up to experience the spirit world and the angels so that's what i'm on now not only about teaching people how to respect the planet and how they can have an effect on that through their own energy and intent and purpose how to obviously connect with the higher realms which i can go up and sit and have a cup of tea with my name whenever i want and that's yeah. what I want to educate people with. Because, you know, there's so many times they say to me, oh, can you tell my mum I love her? I said, you just did. She can hear you. She's with you. I don't think that I'm talking myself out of a job here. But, you know, don't think it's just mediums that can do this. We're all spirit in a human body. We can all connect to souls. We can all experience this. Hence why I've produced so many different types of guided meditation from beginner to advance. Um, so people can literally just sit back, plug me in, and I'll take you to where you need to go. And you can experience it for real. And then you get the people go, oh, did I make it up? And I'm like, look, if you work it, they'll start bringing in the synchronicity. Yeah. They will start saying, look, there's a feather there. Look, there's a number there. Look, we've just played the music from your spirit dad or whatever, you know. I said, and that's when the magic begins. You open up and the magic begins. And with, you know, me, myself and I, it was either, I know, I talk for England as well. I'm the oh, easiest yeah. interviewee, aren't I? You just like sit back and go, off you pop, Nick, go on, crack on. But I remember it quite lucid when, uh, lucidly, when um, I decided after about two, three years in bed, I thought, right, so Nick, you're going to have to man up now. I have to do it and go back up to wherever it is because I didn't believe in the spirit world anymore at that point. I'd lost all my faith. I was in the darkest abyss of hell and pain of my life. And um, or surrender and see if they can do anything. And it was almost like a challenge. I'm like, yeah, go on then. You, you reckon you're so amazing. Let's see you get me out of this. No money, homeless you know disabled for the rest of my life no relationships my career down the pan no friends because I didn't want to be with someone like me because like I didn't want to talk with anybody I was so so poorly in agonizing pain every day and I thought go on then crack on with what you think you can do then and um <laughs> just every time I think of it it makes me laugh Right, because I literally, I have to laugh as I let up cry my eyes out. It's the most magical moment. It was February, right? And bearing in mind, the, the cemetery lodge that I lived in was just woodland and a, and a river running by that went into the dark, the river at um, Kingsway, right? In Devon, people know if they come from this area. And Dartmouth, right? And so it's blinking, freezing. You know, there was you couldn't see any other houses. I needed to just go off grid to heal. And that's what they did. They healed me, right? So I went down in this fleece dressing gown, right? And I was naked underneath because literally I had no body temperature regulation. So I'd be sweating and laying on a towel, incontinent. It was just hell. It was hell. And it was a full moon, which I thought, that's that's Andy. I'm going to do this tonight. <laughs> that's Andy. I didn't know it was a full moon. The dogs were there looking at me like she's mental. Because I used to wander around the cemetery at night if I could walk. So nobody could see me because I just looked like a complete banshee. My hair hadn't been washed for months and I really stank like a, I'm not even going to go there, a dead skunk. And <laughs> I had a hurricane lamp. Someone thought I was a ghost. They nearly crashed their car going past. Because <laughs> I was like that in this white robe with my hood up. That's another story. So anyway, I looked up and I thought, it's now or never. I'm not going to kill myself because as a police officer, I've seen hundreds of murder scenes, hundreds of death scenes. And I knew that I wouldn't be found for ages. There's no way I was going to put my babies through that, my fur babies. So I thought, I'm not going to kill myself. Stop like 
you know, given this disillusionment of ending it, you're not going to. So surrender and see what they can do. So I literally took my fleece like robe off and it was blinking freezing, knelt down on the gravel and I just said, I surrender. I totally surrender. I, I can't take myself home. I'm broken mentally, physically, spiritually. I can't remember the words, but I wrote them in my journal and they're in the book. And I just said, I'm handing myself over to you. I just can't do this anymore. Please help me. And then I just cried, cried for hours. And um, I went in freezing cold, got into bed and just cried myself to sleep. And then I woke up in the morning, dragged myself into the kitchen to obviously feed the dogs and make sure they went out and and the dog walker turned up. But as I opened the door, there was a hamper of food and drinks and fruit and all sorts of things and a healing stone and I'm like where the hell has that come from and it eventually turned out I didn't find out for a while but it was from a friend of mine who who used to come to my workshops when I was well and she said don't ask me why but I felt I had to go and get a load of shopping for you and bring it in so I I didn't ask I was just eating rubbish like biscuits and stuff like that I didn't have a proper meal for like years um and I just literally I either got you know the postman was really kind he'd go to the corner shop or I'd get a delivery if I could afford it but I didn't really have any money to feed myself so everything went on the dog food and um I said I can't believe you did that she goes I just knew I had to do it and then she started doing healing sessions with me and I let her in to do it and then the magic began visitations Metatron, Raguel, all these Haniel, Joffael, never heard of him in my life. And they were all coming in. This is who I am. Raguel came in. I remember going down to the toilet um, and there was this pale blue, I've got it, pale blue angel. I don't know where it's gone. I think it was that one, right? But the, the ribbon's come off now, right? Yeah. Oh, that is an X. It was a pale blue stone. So it's exactly the same as that. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. But with a blue, pale blue stone and a pale blue ribbon, right? So I'm like, I don't remember buying that. It's a bit weird. So I text my friend, who was the only person I saw who was coming and doing healing with me. I said, did you bring an angel? She goes, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. So I'm like, that's really weird. At this point, I then turned into pale blue girl. So I was like, had pale blue cushions, pale blue um, pillows. Everything had to be pale blue around me. And... um. <laughs> And then this voice came in and said, I'm Raguel. And I went, oh, that's another made up name. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just don't, that doesn't exist. That's like Metatron. That's not happening. And he said, um, I'm going to help you with your debt because the person I was with, who I refer to as Dick in my book, he he um, basically wiped me out on my credit cards while I was laying in bed ill. He didn't want to be with someone in a wheelchair. And I had £65,000 worth of debt. And I had bailiffs knocking on the door. Nobody cares. When you are in credit, you know, the banks are your best friend. Oh, have this loan. Have that. Have this. When you need help, they did not help me at all. They dumped me. Mm. I even said, look, I'll try and rent my house out. Please don't let me lose my home. They didn't care. Everything was just taken. Mm. And um, they didn't care at all. And the solicitors have mucked up my claim, so I had no money coming in for that either. It was just horrific. And um, so I said, oh, really? You're going to help me with my debt, are you? Whatever. It's really rude, again. And um, I I kind of said, I'm not listening to you. Go away. So I I went back. I kind of went to sleep. And then he came into my dream in these pale blue robes. I'm like, no way. It's pale blue. So I thought, I can't be, I'm making it up. I was really very, very sceptical. And he said, wake up, get on your phone and speak to the first money person. He called it pentacle person, as in pentacles in the tarot. So I'm like, all right, then it's not going to work. So I have never been so real in all my life because I used to be so proud and such a people pleaser because of my demons. I always used to be, hello, hello. I actually now am genuinely this person, but I never was before, right? Mm-hmm. So I picked up the phone and went, right, this is a situation. I'm going to be rotting in my bed for the rest of my life. That's my prognosis. I've lost everything. I've lost my career. I'm homeless. If you want to take a pound a month for the rest of my disabled, decrepit life, you can. If you want to take me to court, you let me know when you come in. I'll mostly be in my PJs. You can come and take me, will me to court, show me in front of the judge, and then you can try and work out how much I'm going to owe you because you're not going to get a penny off me because I'm too ill. All right. And that's what I did. <laughs> And then I hold, hold the phone a moment and then they go and come back up. Oh, yeah, listen, we're just going to we're just going to cancel the debt. Don't worry about it. I'm like, are you? 
And I said, but you've been like banging on my door, texting me, sending me emails. Yes. I never dealt with, never replied to, couldn't handle it, couldn't handle it. Uh, yeah, okay. Long story short, I cleared 65 grand worth of debt in a day, right? And he said, I told you I would do that. And I'm like, okay. And when I Googled him, he worked on the Pal Blue Ray, Archangel Raguel. And he's the Archangel of Harmony, Balance, Court Procedures, Debt, anything that's really ill-balanced to do with kind of base chakra stuff, legal stuff, he brings harmony, justice, and balance back to. I'm like, I'm going to keep you, Raguel. You are a little diamond. (laughs) <laughs> so I, I connect with him regularly especially if there's you know in life sometimes you get bits of ill balance and things like that and I just say oh can you come in and just sort this out it's ridiculous it's frustrating I haven't got time for it please assist me I please you know give you permission to assist me and it just magically goes away and writes itself mm. and you know people just think one I'm making it up two oh yeah because you're such a guru or whatever um, because you're so spiritually enlightened and you come from good stock, that's why they help you. No, 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 no. It's because I'm awake and I'm a spirit in human body and I can connect to them wherever I want. And so can you. Yes. And that's exactly, that's the longest answer <laughs> I've ever given to my question. <laughs> you tell me about Metatron now because you were going, <laughs> I can feel the goosebumps from here. What is your, what is, tell me about you and Metatron, darling. Transformer boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, going back many, many years, um, basically we moved to the, we moved to the States, we moved to Florida. We literally <laughs> sold every, everything up back in 2011, 12, got a house in Florida totally paid for all all done and dusted um trying to move over there my husband had already got a visa and everything else so I was over there trying to sort all my visas out so one day I get a letter through the post saying that you've got an RFU and you have two weeks to leave and literally what's an RFU an RFU is means that they're they're looking at, at what you've put in they want a load of stuff from you, um, which is not worth even going into. Yeah. Um, so so basically what had happened that we found out, which you, you think, how? The, the attorneys and the lawyers in the States, this one guy had totally, totally messed up my application. Totally. So much so that they actually, as you, whether you know anything about Americans, they, they actually gave us all our money back which they they never do. That's how bad it was. So it's like, right, you've got a letter, you've got to get out, you've got two weeks and you've literally got to leave and then you cannot come back. Can't put foot in the States for a year and be kicked out, right? So we've got a house over there, we've got a business that we're starting up, everything. And it's like, literally, well, what the, what, you know, what do we do now? What the fluff? I I use fluff for the F word now. I'm very good at it now. Yeah. So I said, you know, I said to my husband, like, what are we going to do? So we literally, because we, we didn't want to go back to the UK and all our stuff was in the States. So we can't, that's got to stay put for the moment. So he opens the laptop up and he went, well, how do you fancy? Let's look for an island. And he went, have you ever been to Cyprus? And I went, nope. And he went, right, okay. Two weeks later, we landed on the island of Cyprus. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I'm thinking, like, and I always, even at that point, I always thought, I know that everything happens for a reason. But at this point in time, I can't I can't see it. I don't know why. So, okay, let's, let's see where we go. So we literally ended up with just two suitcases. And off we went and we ended up, we, I rented somewhere. And we like, right, okay. So probably this, and the funny thing was, this was July, 2012. When I had my accident, 2012, they said that all of the light workers will have their life shifted in 2012 in preparation for the happenings, right? I've gone all from top to bottom again. Every <laughs> single medium I've had, been divorced, lost their partners, whatever, happened in 2012 yeah 
Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Yeah, go on. Oh, this is but, exciting, isn't it? Go on. <laughs> so we so we land on the island of Cyprus and ugh, just I, it was so strange how everything opened up. We I'd been studying while we were in America um nutrition. I went down this path of of total food, nutrition and everything else. And I, I read and researched so much. And I kept saying to my husband, we need to turn vegetarian or vegan and blah. And he went, not having it, not doing it. <laughs> so we got to Cyprus and one day he just watched this video and it was nothing to do about food. It was all on a delivery of, of this guy and he watched it and it was all to do with nutrition and he turned around to me and he went, right. He said, I'm going to try it for 30 days. And I went, right, okay. And I'm thinking, wow. Where has where this come from? So I went, right, okay, great, 30 days. And so we both went down this path and we're, we're still on it like 12 years later. But then once that started happening, I started getting onto the internet. And this is what I'm sure every, all of my clients, all of my, the people that I deal with, everybody's first thing is down the rabbit hole, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So everybody right. starts down the rabbit hole yeah. and we look at, you know, what's happened, where we go. We look at supposedly all the conspiracy theories, the Rothschilds, yeah. the Rockefellers. Yes, yes, yes. Things yes, happen yes. and everybody goes. Reality, not conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I go on this massive, huge, deep dive and everything like start starts to, to awaken. So at this stage, we we move property. We're now in a property that we rent. And we ended up in this massive, massive villa. And when we're looking for somewhere, we're driving around and it's right on the front of, of where we call sea caves and it looks out to the sea and we're driving around. Oh. And, and I said, oh. I said to my husband, I says, right. I said, this is real. I says, I want that kind of villa there with that massive field on the back so we can grow our own things. So the next day we get, we showed, we showed around and we pulled up at this great big villa and we pulled, we pulled up and we went, Oh, there must be something else behind that. We've got to go down the drive of it. Anyway, she opens the door, we goes in and I'm, and we're, and I'm thinking, there's no way we can afford this. This, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So it's in, an acre with seven acres of a field on the back. It's oh, five okay. bedroom, five bathrooms, nearly 4,000 square feet. And at the time, she tells me the price. And because of the euro, it's like, right, OK, th this is like, this is OK. And that's where we ended up. And it was like, right, OK, where are we going from here? And it had got a downstairs annex completely on its own with its own bathroom and everything else and I didn't realize to my path where I was going that was going to end up being my studio so as we moved oh. into this property suddenly all these all this thing that started happening I ended up going that that's why I had to smile I ended up going flying yeah and it got it got this big beard. That's why I was just smiling so much. Oh my god! It, yeah, it, I'm going all goosey again. And he got this great big beard and everything. And he got me it was holding me around the waist, and we were we were flying all over the place. And I'm thinking, oh wow, this is this is really weird. So things just started to happen. I, I was getting intuition. I was having dreams of things that were going to, warnings of things that were going to happen that I've never yeah. had that actually did happen. Yeah. Um, I started seeing the orbs, the lights, um, all kinds of stuff. So then I started again going on this path of massive research. Could not get enough. I was obsessed. More or less 24 hours a day watching videos, reading, like I could not get enough of all of this kind of stuff. And one day I picked up a book by Dolores Cannon. Yeah. And I literally read about past lives. And it was like, it was like, I always knew. I, it was like a massive, huge moment. And then it was like, right, okay, what can I do? Where can I do? And as everybody does, you, then it's like, 
reading about Reiki and energy therapy and all this. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be a Reiki <laughs> practitioner. And it's like, no, no, you're not. Get in there, do it yourself. So I'm right, okay, so I find somebody. I go through all, all of it, literally from beginning to end, did all of that. And as I'm starting to do that, obviously, the, the more that I start to open up, the more everything gets, the weird yep. stuff that's happening. I'm having sessions with people who who say, like, your guide, one of your main guide is Metatron, the other one is St. Germain. Oh, my God, St. Germain. Oh, my, I'm, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Yeah, so that you, you're connected to the seraphim. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going goosey constantly. So I'm like, and I'm and for some reason I am mad on sacred geometry. And back in the day, I couldn't understand. I had no idea why. And one of the biggest, most profound things that ever happened to me was I in the middle of the day, I lay on the sofa and I'd got my feet on the floor. I was it was just hot. I just put my body down, feet on the floor, just to relax. And I went somewhere. Mm. And when I came back, I the feeling was, just for a few seconds, was undescribable. I went home. Yep. And from that moment on, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that we don't die. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That and it was incredible. And, and it was like it was just amazing and where I went and what happened to me was the most bizarre thing and at the time we'd got our first dog who was a Rottweiler and he was actually there with me where where I went so he obviously turned in he was a guide yeah because he was a very old soul and where I went I met this uh this man and this woman and it was it was all grass it was all expanse, open field. And there was a, a rickety old building that looked like it was falling down, made of stone and everything. And she said, she said, just go and knock on the door over there. She said, you know, there's, I think, husband, it'll go, just go and see him. And I'm thinking, well, it looks a bit weird. It's like there's nobody in it. So knock on the door and he opens the door and this guy is stood there. And inside this house is amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm thinking this is a bit strange. Yeah. So I walk in, my husband's obviously with me wherever I've gone, and he's at the back of me. And I walk in, and this corridor, which again made me smile, this corridor, and there's all these pictures on my right-hand side. And as I walk past these pictures, they're all sacred geometry. And as I walk past them, they change. And I literally, as I walk past, they all change. And I turn around to my husband, I went, did you see that? I said, that's amazing. I said, did you see it? And this guy said, he said, no, he said, he can't see it. He said, he isn't like you. He says, he's not there. And then, and then I came back and obviously that, that feeling of, wow, that's, you know, when you, you know, when you've had that feeling, it's yeah. like, it's just profound. You can't even describe it to somebody unless you've had it yourself. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely so, right. So, so that that for me was just like wow, in, just totally, totally incredible. So I knew that obviously there was something to to all of this, but I never knew what all this, what these pictures were about, and the sacred geometry, and me passing them and them changing, until years later. And when we were over in Cyprus, I. Again, synchronicity. I ended up watching a video with a lady on it who, again, I felt I've got to go and see. And mm. everything fell into place when we were coming back to the UK. And I clicked on where we were actually staying, which was going to be down south. She got a workshop on the same weekend and it all fell into place. And I'm thinking, and you know, when you've got that feeling that no matter what, you've got to go. It was so yeah. important. I got to go. Yeah. So I ended up. At this lady's name, she's all, she's quite a bit on my channel actually. It's an old lady named Shirley Batty. She's amazing, and it was a channeling class, and there was ten people in this class. And I'm thinking, right, okay. So the whole idea was we were ch- learning to channel and bringing people in and everything. So I'm I'm the last in the circle. So she's going round everybody, and everybody's bringing whoever in. She comes to me, and I'm like, 
God, I don't know what I'm going to do here because there's literally there's nobody here. So she comes to me and she went, Melanie. I went, yes. She says, you have a very, very large being above you, male, who would like to come in. Will you allow it? And I went, yeah, okay. So this energy came in. And she's going, right, okay, you need to talk. You need to you need to say something. You need to say something. And I'm like, I'm thinking. She went, just say anything, just say anything. So I felt this massive block in my throat chakra, like, like this. And I just came out with a tirade of this language, of this light language. And it just came out of my mouth and it didn't stop. It was like, I explain, it's like uncorking a bottle. It just went on and on and on. And eventually she had, wow. to, she had to shut him down. She asked what his name was and he laughed. But it was, it, you know, when it's not you. And he, and he laughed because there was no way he was like, he, at this point in time, was he even going to like bring himself down to who he was? So she stops me because obviously we've got nine other people in, in this room. And so I sit back and I'm like, what the flip has just happened? And everybody's faces are like like, wide eyed and literally like me thinking, what is like that? She's mental. (laughs) So I'm like, so I get, we finish, I get out in the car, my husband picks me up and I went, I've just had something <laughs> such strange, <laughs> really strange happen to me. I said, you real, you will not believe this. So I thought that this was a one-off thing, that whatever had happened was that was it. And did anybody record it? No, no. And I and I thought, I, I don't know, can't do it again. And your weirdest thing was, I knew what light language was. Because months and months before, I happened to come across a video with somebody doing it. And I watched it and I thought, this is flipping ridiculous. This takes it beyond anything else. Everything that I know and I've done, this just takes a biscuit. And this is rubbish. And I literally completely pushed it to one side and that was it. And then for me to literally be in that situation again, I'm thinking, right, this is just mental. So afterwards, a few days after, and I'm sat down, I'm thinking, can I actually, if I sit, can I actually then bring this through and repeat this? And anyway, I it, I could. So I'm thinking, wow, right, okay. But I'm thinking, why? Why? <laughs> you know, like, and then, because obviously I know about it, people speak it, people can sign it, people can write it. There's all kinds of, of ways of doing it. Mm. So I'm I'm like, this is just ridiculous. So to cut a long story short, this took me down a rabbit hole of two years because I had to integrate it. I didn't know what I was doing with it, why it was there. It really messed me up because I thought I was I was going on a path of where where I'd already trained and where I was going. Yeah, they, yeah. Proper th- they proper threw in a curveball of like this. And I'm thinking, well, you know, this is bloody stupid. Yeah. So we go, we go through all of this and we come back, we eventually leave Cyprus. We come back to the UK. A lot of synchronistic events happened and where they put me in places with everybody, with certain with a group of people. And so it all comes to light that anyway, I, I ended up um, bringing and activating people's light language through. And I'm thinking, right, OK, this is going like this is strange. But in the course of all of this, I picked a pen up one day and I thought, oh, I wonder if I can write it. I picked a pen up and it like it. I thought, no, I'm just obviously meant to speak it. So a few months go past and it went, right, pick a pen up now. And I'm right, okay. So I picked the pen up and and that was it. And then it was like, it was ridiculous. I've got A5 pads and I sit there and I'm scribing, scri- I'm just writing, I'm writing this bloody stupid language. And I'm going on and on and on. And I've got pads like this and I could not stop, right? 
Mm. So I'm thinking, what what is it? What am I doing? I can't read it. It's just like literally just squiggles. So again, a deep dive and thinking, right, I need to find out about this. And everywhere I went, somebody said, oh, this is what it does. And I'm going, no, nah, mine doesn't do that. This, oh, no, it does that. No, mine doesn't do that. I'm thinking, I'm going, just tell me. Just tell me. Yeah. Right. So we get to the stage of literally, somebody said to me, you, a friend said, I've got some information. You've got to write emerald the emerald codes and I'm going right okay so I did this got my iPad did these emerald codes right that were apparently real I showed them people and they're like whoa right okay so the next day I'm sitting in my study and it's right right okay go over there to your book and I've got big bookcase I've got loads and loads of books and I go and pick this book up that I've not picked up for maybe three years. And it's like, right, go to this chapter. And I get the, and I get this chapter and I read it. And I'm like, wow. And they're literally telling me what it does, how it works and everything else. And I'm going, right, okay. And then I got a big piece of paper and I went, right, questions and answers. And I went, right, okay, why does my blah, 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 and I'm writing and they give they're giving me all these answers and I'll get to the bottom of this page that, I, that they've given me all of this and when I'm coming when I come back and I sit and read it and I'm like I had to look up some of the words I didn't even know you be publishing this why is it not oh yeah it's no, well, it's it's actually I it's only it's only a script. It's on, I actually read it out on one of my one of my videos, and they actually give me the whole information of how my light language works and what it does, and it was it was like right, okay, so I I understand all this. So we get we get to this stage, and we've I've still got this connection with Metatron. So in all of, all of this download that started to happen like many months after this, they, and, and this is something that I put out there that's going to sound weird because I've not put this out there at all because it sounds so flipping weird, right? Yeah. So they said to me, I am one of four. Yeah. I'm, right, I'm writing this down again. And I went, you really? I'm one of four? They went, yes, you're one of four. Right, okay. Carry on writing. You are of the highest order. And I'm going, that's a bit egotistical. <laughs> so, so that never got put anywhere because I didn't understand what they meant. <laughs> so roll on that. There is somebody who was following called Alba Wyman who does QHHT, past life regression, things like this. And she was coming to the UK and I wanted to, to be able to do that anyway. Didn't manage to, to get a slot because to get a slot is really difficult. But when she came to the UK, obviously people did. Videos come up and I watched it and it's like one of them was channeling Metatron. And I'm like, Ooh. right. So obviously there's this guy who is a an embodiment of fractal of Metatron. And I watched the video and I'm like, right, okay, interesting. So months went by. Things fell into place. Don't know how it came about. We ended up one day connecting on Messenger and I went to him, do you fancy a chat? If you've got time, anyway, we, we ended up having a chat. And I, t I said to him, and I don't know why I was compelled to say this to him. I went, recently I received information to say that I am one of four. Anyway, this poor bloke, he nearly fell off his chair. Because he just looked at me and he went, right. He went, one week ago, he said that I am one of four and there are three others. There are three sisters and I will find them shortly. And I'm going, we oh both my. like. That's just brilliant. And we're like, right, okay, this is very bizarre. So, right. So we fast forward, it took a while to find the other two of the four and it turns out that there are exactly in the physical there are seven years between us all 
That's interesting. Magic number seven. Yeah. And so that the there is literally, but the three of us are all female. So we've got Metatron and then we've got three sisters of Metatron. Yeah. So we so we all hold this Metatronic energy from the crystal origins. Yeah, that's why I had to smile when you were saying what you were saying. So, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, I know. But you know, the weirdest thing is, is because with the other two, because I'm in UK, one's in, was in, uh, one's in Slovenia and the other was in Sweden, but she's, she's not there at the moment. But the the beginning, she figured out, Inez, one day, she sent me a photo and a proper, like, it was wow. And she, there was the three of us, and she realised that the that the first letter of our names, which is Melanie, we've got Inez, and we've got Aura, she put, spelt I am. And it was like, wow that's a bit weird you know how many female names are there in the world but our three names first letters happen to spell in that order spell i am what is the initial of the um the, the guy Na- his name's nilesh so it's an n n yeah wow yeah so we we've had obviously like so so many experiences through this and from all, all of this, because when I had an, a, a meeting with Shirley after the light language came through, I was obviously trying to find out what all this was about. She said to me at the time when I had this reading, she said, you're a walk-in. And I went, right, OK, I know what one is, but yeah, right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then one day, uh, Nilesh and I were, were doing... Uh, we're doing a meditation but the weirdest thing again we go back the day before I was in the garage on my hands and knees crying my eyes out surrendering hallelujah to that <laughs> so literally but at least going, it wasn't warmer yeah going through the dark night of the soul just literally saying that's it I'm, I, I yeah I'd surrender you know whatever you know do what you're gonna do yeah Happened then the next day, we get together, we do this meditation. And in this meditation, I I literally, I get to a point and he went, go further, go further, go further. And I shoot up. And as I've gone up, first of all, I'll go back. I, I see myself with my physical parents and there's me in the middle at four and a half, five years of age. And eventually I go up I go right up further and then suddenly come straight back down. And as I come down, I have this realisation and I start crying and and screaming and I'm really upset and I'm going, they left me here, they left me here, they left me. And he went, no, you you were placed. And had the full-on knowledge that I was, I was, I was placed here at at that age. So she was spot on when she said I was a walk-in. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind it totally fit with my experience was because I said to my mom at the age of eight, you're not my mother. Am I? I was convinced I was adopted. Oh my for, for, I was convinced. I used to say to her, you're not. And this is what, what, what they say with walk-ins. Yeah. And it wasn't until this happened that it all slotted into place and it to- made total sense why I was convinced and why I felt like that so all you and you're totally right all this metatronic energy there are so many people here of the crystal origins that hold this frequency that are here to help people move forward to awaken to bring into that energy of where we're going of the of the 5d energy which metatron is all about Absolutely right. And this is a thing. We are here to wake them up to that. Mm. And, it, you know, it sounds a bit cliche, the wake up bit. But people just think they are just humans. Mm. 
And it it really frustrates me because listening to your story, that is beyond miraculous. But there's millions of stories like that. Yes. Everybody's wake up path and journey is just wow. And most, you know, people that are perhaps closed down or asleep, whatever you want to call them, will go, yeah, whatever. Yeah, OK. But you can't deny some of the synchronicities and signs that they create to wake you up and you think this is serious shite do you know what I mean like oh my goodness this is just beyond anything and because you know I I kind of the biggest see I thought that because I come from a real strong bloodline of medium psychic sealers because my auntie used to do the automatic writing and I never thought that I would have a oh my god time you know that 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 minute of wow and I obviously had it when I suddenly surrendered And the second one, my dad, just to finish my path of waking off, and this is why I've suddenly gone into this. I knew nothing about the Rockefellers, Bill Gates and all the rest of them, the Rothschilds and the rest of it. Totally oblivious of it, wasn't interested. Um, I literally just thought I'd keep plodding on doing what I do. And my dad, when he did his visitation, he basically also said, the next time that your life will completely change... This is a basis of what he was saying is when you see this symbol and it was a triangle with a circle just a little bit taken out from the from the bottom bit of the circle. I'm like, right. I looked for it everywhere. I was like, is it a publisher sign? What is it? I couldn't find it anywhere. And then when I finally um, got a place to live, which was Somerset, it was the cheapest place to go um, at the end was called the Burrow Mump. And it was like a triangular hill. And I saw the sun behind it. But there was an Archangel Michael Church on it. It's another story. And I thought, could it be that? And so I thought it was at the time. Anyway, roll forward to a few weeks ago. I was invited to go out and do a conference in Florida, the Galactic Spiritual Informers um, Connection. And it was mind-blowing. The people there, the truth, you know, the delivery of truths from galactic acknowledgement to um medical um secrets there's whistleblowers from all all all, fun, all the different um facets of what we need to know about to wake us up right i don't know what i was doing there but she wanted me to do you know the fact that religion ego peers society tell us we can't go up and do what we do you know we can't wake up we can't go to spirit well we can't go to the angels and blah blah blah, blah because we're not allowed to because it's a sin and so my truth was we all can and I went to see Elena Danan, right? Oh my, she is mind blowing. And I normally get, you know, bits and pieces from people I stand in front of and see their colours of the auric field and blah, blah, blah. But she's just another level. And I and I couldn't work her out to begin with. I'm not going to lie. And it wasn't until someone said, oh, she's like Atlantia. And I went, okay. And she literally channels galactic people, galactic beings. I'm like, okay. And I thought, I'm going to go and have a look at her presentation. And I sat there and just went, oh, oh, no, you're joking me. The first sketch or the first screen she puts up is the symbol for Atlantis. Now, I know that I had a previous existence there, um, but it's never been important, to be honest with Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And the first symbol is a triangle with a circle exactly how my dad had drawn it wow. like 11 years ago. And I'm like, what the, and I just couldn't believe it. And then suddenly, you know, she showed me the Trident and showed me the Atlanteans and it all just came flooding back. And I kept getting flashbacks of me almost representing like mermen and mermaids, hence why I most we got this tattoo. Yes. Right? Even it. Wow. In colonial wars, fighting for our rights and our space and fighting galactic scally things that were coming and trying to take our um, our land, take our places, take our colonies. And then suddenly the big, massive drownings and the waters. And I've been having these for years. And suddenly it's all there in front of me. And I just go, Bing! oh, my God, this is what I've been missing. And so I literally, perhaps it's a bit longer than four weeks now that I got back from Florida, but I literally have suddenly been open to this world where there's more to the universe and it makes so much sense. And when I listen to Dr. Michael Sala, I'm like, he might, he's just talking, I might as well be up there saying exactly the same thing. But his perception of Metatron, 
of the angel soul clusters is from a galactic source, but it's exactly the same. Yeah. So you've got all these people waking up and, and, and just, you know, I said, Dr. Michael Sala there. There was also Dr. Christian Northrup there. Mm. These are credible people mm. that are yes. really highly esteemed in their field. Dr. Christian Northrup was a massive Hay House author. She was having yeah. lunch with Louise A. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then suddenly she started telling the truth because she was woken up to the situation of what's going on with COVID jabs and goodness knows what. And suddenly she's banned from everywhere. You can't see her anywhere. She has to go on Rumble when she lost her uh, deal with Hay House. And literally all these people just put all the puzzles in of this whole universal plan for us to help save humanity. And that may, may sound a bit drastic and sound a bit Lord of the Rings. Do you know what I mean? Or I don't know, Armageddon. I'm sure it, it it's will true. Do a, yeah, it will do to a lot of people. But it, like I said, not not to me, because when I, when I emailed you and I said, literally said to you, Metatron, I come from a more cosmic <laughs> aspect. Yes. Yeah, li- literally. But that's, with me, he's never he's never come. I've never ever really seen him as an archangel. It's always been galactic and a cosmic aspect. Yeah, yeah, of course so, it will be because they're yeah. all they're all connected with those yes. other consciousness. And I wasn't aware of that. I was limiting it to mm. the spirit world, the angel realms. I was mm. limited to these frequencies that I've known since I was born, basically. And then suddenly, oh, that's where you fit in. Mm. And suddenly this big awakening of where I was once with the Atlanteans and everything. I, I, if I could live in the sea, I would. And then watching, you know, all the other people uh, that, that were exposing all these old civilizations that have been found underwater, under an- Antarctic, un- under Antarctica, that are actually crystal forms and and buildings that there's no way we could build you know it's all advanced technology and I'm like that's the last piece of this awakening and it's it's enriched my soul with this memory of the fact that we have got this cosmos universe galactic energy obviously blending in with the archangels and everyone else we can't limit ourselves to just think there's just one frequency we go to and to have that open up to that field of knowledge it's been mind blowing, mm. and so you get these people now that email, and luckily Lorraine, she's a um, quantum hypnotherapist, um, who is my new assistant to take over the admin because it's just gone crazy, and um, she's got all this knowledge. She's had it all the time, and I used to go, yeah, okay, what, whatever, yeah, 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 universe aliens, yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just talking about bit love and Palladians and Arcturians. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh my. And then it just, I felt, I know him. I recognize that form. I know this. Oh, I know where that plant is. I know where that hidden thing is. It's near Hawaii. And it all started coming back. And there's that awakening. And then I just think, oh, pull it in, Nick. Pull it in, Nick. Because people think you've turned nuts. Do you know what? They think I've gone down David Icke's way. But he's not nuts. He's just totally open to everything that's being brought to him. And he's fearless. And um, it's a beautiful thing to have. It's a beautiful thing to have the knowledge. It's just we now have to make sure we deliver it in a way that we can reach people that are so far away and so so close down. We've got to find a way to reach them. And, you know, as I said, doctor, they are hitting all of the most highly esteemed people and bring them into that. It's like Dr. Eben Alexander. I don't know if you've heard of him. And he he was a a massively famous, highly esteemed US brain surgeon, a neurosurgeon. And he literally said, we live, we die, end of. We are just matter that dies when the brain dies. It's as simple as that. Massive skeptic. Then one day he literally drops down with a virus and it is eating him alive. Right. It's killing him. It's literally eating through his brain and they've never encountered a virus like it. After a couple of days, the surgeons I could be a bit ring on this, but this is the, the very like pricey of it. Yeah. Um, and they say to his wife, look, he's brain dead. He's literally being kept alive by a ventilator. We've lost him. He's not coming back. This is the most vicious like virus we've ever encountered. We've got nothing for it. We are in big problems here. You need to let him go. She said, no, I'm not doing it. So after, I think, a couple of days, I think they were even considering going to get a court order for human rights to, like, put him yeah. in peace, I suppose. Yes. And she would not have it. She said, I'll fight you. I will fight you. And then the following day, he woke up completely normal. 
and said, get me a pen now. I've been in heaven for the last seven days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, what the heck? They were like in shock because he was literally clinically brain dead. He was all his neurons had stopped. Literally everything was dead. Right. And he starts writing. He's like, yeah, get me something to eat. And he's writing and drawing maps of everything he'd experienced. And he was taking on this, the wings of this large butterfly. And there was this girl he recognised but didn't know who he, she was. And he later found out in life that he had a sister that died. He didn't even know. And it was her when he saw the photograph. And so he now, as this highly esteemed sceptic, goes around telling people about heaven and creates books with maps of heaven and what he experienced up there. So they are, and it's just lovely watching all these, you know, because normally people go, oh, yeah, it's one of those tree uggers. That's what they're talking about. It's not anymore. <laughs> they're hitting doctors, nurses, yes. incredible yes. people that were yes. once load of rubbish, and they're hitting them, waking them up, and they're like, oh, this has just happened to me. And the people are being, well, if that doctor's, there's got to be something in it. It's got to be something in it because he was clinically dead. And he says, there is absolutely no way I could dream or hallucinate because there were no sight, there were no neurons firing off in my brain to create it. So I know scientifically there's absolutely no way I could have dreamt I was in heaven because I was brain dead. And it's just a brilliant person for them to pick because nobody can argue with it because it's literally combined science with spirituality and gone boom, take you know, pick the bones out of that one because it's real. And I just think, love it. And there's thousands of people like that being affected all the time. And it really is. And this is the other thing that, you know, people are starting to panic because I'm obviously delivering the reality of the crisis we have with the planet at the moment. And all the fat cats are running it. They're trying to control us. They're trying to cull, you know, the amount of population we have um, without getting too deep with it all. Um, And... You know, you're trying to tell these people and they start panicking. So I start getting emails. Oh, no, I'm really scared now you said that. And I'm like, don't be scared. Wake up and be counted. Yes. Sign those petitions. Start, you know, looking after your planet. Start signing petitions for no you know, longer hunting this specific animal species. Get involved with your local communities to save the area in, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is you can do, whatever tiny little thing it is, send love to the wars. Send love to the animals that are suffering. Send love to the children that are hiding in shadows. Be mindful. Send your energy. Not on, what should I get fish fingers or steak tomorrow? Or oh, how much money have I got in the bank? Get rid of that because they'll look after you. Once you're in, they'll look after you. I'll never forget when I was in that cemetery, the boiler broke and it was a rented premises and um, it was absolutely freezing anyway, this place. And even in bed, I was freezing cold. I, thought, I can't believe this. It was the middle of winter and the parish council that I was renting it from basically weren't going to be until the Tuesday. I think it was a bank holiday. I'm like, I've had it. And I literally said, whoever can help me, I think it was Ariel because she deals a lot of base chakra stuff. She's one, she, I work with her a lot of Michael and she also is the animal kingdom and the planet and natural disasters weather she works a lot with the seraphim and um I said please I said look you know I know you've introduced yourself being a bit cheeky but I'm freezing and my dogs are shivering please I need help I need money to bring someone that's going to do it for free please do anything and you know what even to this day I don't know where it came from I got a credit put into my bank account the following morning for 600 odd quid right good angel number in itself six and I still do not know how that came in and that allowed me to phone a plumber in to emergency you know get the heating back on until I could claim the money back Mm. still don't know where that money come from and that's how they work that is how they work even down to parking you know I've I've done it before where I've said to Ariel oh no no, no, I'm really late. I need to get there. I'm just so stressed. Can you please just create a space for me? I know this is really bad with what's going on on the planet, but just help me. Just do this. Bang, the frequency comes in. And then as I turn up, I'm like, that didn't work. And then a car pulls out. And then it was AR1, like Ariel. And then there was an E and then another one. I'm like, Even a name came up on the name plate of the car, number plate. Yeah. I'm like, you just, you know, you just can't. There's not enough time. Um, to say about all the miracles that happen to you when you're awake. There's no time. I could sit here for weeks and weeks and weeks telling people I've been through. And I've tried to put as many as I can in that. But it's going to take like 100 books. Mm. 
Yeah. You know, it's I, so magical. And that's why so desperate. These people that are in crisis going through the dark night of their soul, people that are suicidal, got mental health problems or chronic illness, whatever it is, I'm desperate to reach them because all they've got to do is open up. And, it, you know, they might not be magically healed and be running around after being in a wheelchair, but their mind, their soul, their energy will take on a completely different persona and a different energy of hope, a different energy of reality where they think I'm actually not alone. This is all good. I can cope with this. And then suddenly they'll develop a craft, you know, and they'll think, Oh, I might use this as a little business. And before they know it, they're back in the game again, even if they're stuck at home, you know, and it's just incredible. And, you know, when I I remember I had a reading from someone um, years ago, I inadvertently just went into a church and they said, um, I've had loads of readings about prophecies, but she said, um, you're going to be doing a book. And I'm like, which one? You know, because obviously none of the publishers were interested. Once I ended up in bed, they, everything just dropped me like a hot firework. And um, she said, uh, it will be the one where you are the pioneer and you're going to go through the suffering. That one, she said, the one where you went through the suffering, you'll be showing people how to get out the other side and to hold their hand when they're going through their dark night of the soul. I didn't even know what dark night of the soul meant then. Yeah. I went, oh, thank you. <laughs> and it is the first one, which was me, myself and I, which I wasn't even going to put out. It was just a diary of the hell I went through and the miracles that took place to get me where I am now. And um, someone just said to me, that's a book in there. And I went, nobody's going to be interested. You've got to deal with in a week, Long, a very short story. And um, she even told me that. And so I went and she goes, oh, my God, you've got such amazing things coming. She goes, you just don't realise it. But when you're closed down and when you're in that darkness, you're like, whatever, love. And that's the problem. That's why I said we've got to be, we've got to sit in the energy of the divine and say how will I reach the people that don't want to hear because I remember when I was in my dark night of the soul when I just want I looked at that morphine bottle every day and I'm like I just need all I've got to do is put that down my throat because I was in so much pain and so much loss I just it was horrific and I remember just sitting there and and again when I could write it you know I put it in the diary And I remember trying to watch things, you know, people, Louise Hay, people saying, all you have to do is this. And I'm like, oh, is that right? Oh, whatever. And I used to be really resentful of these people. Oh, well, I've done it. I've healed myself. I've done this. I've done that. I'm like, oh, whatever. And it used to make me angry rather than make me interested. Yes. And so the line of empathy has to be met with a line of delivery so that you can say, I've been there. It was totally crap. I'm still not cured. No, I'm not. Don't know why. How can I not be? And this is what people say, well, why, how come you're not, you know, completely cured? It's because most people have been touring again or back on the TV all the time again. Yeah. Keep, Perhaps that isn't my path yeah. now. This yeah, is all path. Yeah, and, yeah you know, exactly. Of, it's, obvi- my, it's obviously been put there for now. Yeah. For now. Yeah. To, to help to, people through. Exactly. You know, and, that's why, and even when I started, you know, they, they forced me into TikTok, they forced me into YouTube. I'm like, what, you want me to sit in bed looking like crap, talking to people? I went, yeah. Because it shows that you are transparent. It shows that you don't have an ego. It shows that you love yourself so much now, because I never did, not in an arrogant way, that I am happy to say, I am real. This is me. I feel crap today. But let's have a chat about it, shall we? And that has helped me reach so many people that think, you know what? She's she's credible because she's not creditable, whatever the word is, because she's not giving it, oh, look how good I am. Look how wonderful I am. I'm just saying, this is what happened to me. If you want to try and experience it, perhaps try. Mm-hmm. And all you've got to do is open up or plug in a meditation. And that's how your journey will begin. It's that simple. But, you know, the one thing I do warn people is, is that one of the most incredible experiences was when I was really poorly and really like in the pits of hell, my friend said, I'm going to take you up to our local community centre and spiritualist centre and, and I'm going to do some drum heal. I went, whatever, I slowed a crap, it don't work. I was so, <laughs> such an arsehole. <laughs> Might work, slowed a right, it's just a waste of time. Banging a drum, yeah, whatever, love. Just going, well, you can say what you want, Nikki, I'm taking you up there, I went, do what you want. So she wheeled me in my wheelchair, I'm really pissed off because I was like, you know, a year ago, up there doing seminars, workshops, evenings and mediumship, and I'm being wheeled in in a wheelchair. Yeah the blanket around me and I hate the world and everybody in it I was rude to everybody there I, oh my god I was awful so she took me into this room and I'm lying there and I literally was 
go on then, do your best. Do you know what I mean? And she was, well, just unfold your arms. I was, oh, well, that's going to change anything. I was such a bitch. I'm not going to lie, but I was hurting. You know, I was hurting. So I laid down and then suddenly, boom, I was off. And Julianus came to me. I always get emotional at this bit. And um, he kissed my forehead and I physically felt it. And it was like ice and heat at the same time as lemonade. Mm. And I nearly opened my eyes because I thought my friend or the other healer that was at the base of my body was kissing me. And I thought, that's a bit random. Why are they kissing me on the forehead? And then he held my face and I could feel the same thing and it was still there. And I knew it was him. I could physically feel him touch me. He goes, my darling Nicola. I'll let, I'll let him get away with the fact to call me Nicola. And he said, do you honestly think that we would have put you through this pain if we didn't need to? Your divine path was here. And because of your demons and your decisions, your free will, you pulled yourself so far into a dark forest of, you know, it's a, we, we couldn't, we could not do anything. We had to change your path drastically. It's the only way we could bring you back. Mm. I said, and I remember saying, well, road accident's a bit harsh. She goes, no, it's not because you were killing your body through you serving everybody else apart from yourself. He said, the problem is, and he showed me suddenly, me on a road and a path, and I was in a dark forest. He goes, the problem is we're going to have to send you all the way back through that pain to get to where you are. Sorry about that. He's obviously telling me time's up. Here, <laughs> I see hour and a quarter on the money yes. isn't that weird all right teddy bless so i said what you mean i've got to go back through it he goes we can't eradicate it goes imagine it's like a giant thorn has been put into your side he said we have to get it out and that's going to hurt but then once it's out that's when you start to heal and i thought what a brilliant analogy mm. and so i know that i had to go through all that pain so i ended up having a spiritual boot camp of my i ended up having a spiritual boot camp of my life where I went through all my exes that were all toxic and I went through all of the things that I'd done out of anger and pain and ego and they literally took me through everything and eradicated every single shadow self that I had within me and my demons and brought me out the other side and I'll never forget when I finally ended up on that road and my dad was there holding me and all my three guides were there saying you're here and they pointed over and said see that over there and I said yeah and it was this big dark bramble gnarly forest they said, that's where you were and they said, and this is the beginning. Rest in it's history. Mm. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? it? it yeah. It, and you do, and you think, is it in my, imagina in my yeah. imagination? No. And then suddenly, boom, someone who's like, that you turn the telly on and it'll have a forest on it and it'll do like a dark and gnarly forest. You're like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Or someone, you know, it's like, for instance, just last week, um, I thought I was losing Teddy. I thought it was going to Rainbow Bridge. It was just lifeless and it was horrific. And I said to Raphael, please, please, please come down. I can't lose him yet. I just lost my other one a few months ago. I said, not yet. Let him have his time. And um, I said, just let me know that you've heard my prayer. Go down to get a Costa Coffee. Yay, they've opened one up just on my beach here, which I manifested this and ordered my address and ordered my house next to the beach. Went down for a Costa. And as I've stood by the beach, just about to take a sip, someone's going, Raphael, Raphael, come on, Raphael. I'm like... Who calls a dog Raphael? <laughs> and I'm like, God, you did that quick. That was only like 10 minutes. I'm liking it. I'm liking what you're doing. <laughs> and that's how it works. And that's why I want to share to as many people as I can that it works if you work it. And so yeah. here we are doing what we're doing. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Mm. I think the, the the main thing is, is like, like you say, and especially where we've gone today in our conversation, <laughs> they're gonna be like guys like it is what it is you know like I'm putting myself out there in my truth and so is Nikki it may sound totally far-fetched for some people but this is the truth this is what has happened this is your path when you're on it yes and we're intelligent women Mel we're intelligent women it's like I was a police officer I was a major investigation detective I served for 18 years before I got medically retired because obviously my plan was to be doing this I'm not some fluffy wearing you know a cobweb dress oh the spirits are with us and everything's fluffy and tree huggy absolutely not if anything 
I'm not open-minded skeptic, but I do go, mm, really? You're going to need to prove that. And they've even yeah. started doing it. One, we had the te- technical issues. But, like, for instance, a dragonfly flew off on camera and the other day when I was channeling. And someone said, did you notice your tarot cards were waving up? No. And then the Alexa turned herself on and started playing music. Then the yeah. printer turned itself on. It's not even plugged in. Right. And then like last night, um, I was talking with someone on a podcast and there was this knock in and then their granddad walks in. You know, it was brilliant. Howard was. He was great. And you just and I feel like they're going to start creating phenomena around people like us to say she's saying it. We're backing it up. Explain this. It's like that light's turned off there. Right. Mm -hmm. That one there. Yes. And I thought, what's going on with that? And I don't know why it's turned off because it's plugged in. And it's just decided to turn itself off, right? And earlier on, it did come in my mind. So sorry, I'm bending over. It did come in mind. I thought, has the has the bulb gone, right? And so it hasn't because, mm-hmm. yes. Look, now it's back yeah. on. How weird is that? Oh, and now it's gone off again. I don't know what the hell that was about. So it's never happened. That's another thing. He's definitely saying it's time now. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? Yeah, it's, I told it's, you. It's, it's like I'm so sorry. It's like at the very beginning when we said how I literally was having to put purple on, bright purple, and I put it like that is. If I went up and fetched it now, like it is the brightest purple shirt. And me. Yeah, I I just cannot believe that it's just incredible, isn't it? Yeah, but this is. So this I is... see you. I love that saying. Avatar. When they said that for the first time, I cried my eyes out. Yeah, and I made sure I got on that ride three times when I was <laughs> the Universal or Disney World. No, Animal Kingdom, isn't it? I was like Avatar. I see you because that is the best depiction of what is going on on the planet. That spirit tree in Avatar, the first film, that mm-hmm. is our souls, the awakened souls. And then the rest are all of the fat cats and the leaders and the controllers that are trying to diminish us and our resources and the fact that we are spirit, we are soul, we are all part of one consciousness. So that film to me, I cried the whole way through it when I watched it because I'm like, that's us. Mm. That's the people that are awake. They're the light workers. Yeah, and I and it's the spirit world in it as well. Oh my, I just love that film. So every time, and the amount of times I said it at the at the GSIC conference, I see you because now I can just see people and know they're awake. Mm-hmm. And I never saw that before. I saw if they were had an ability or what auric field color had, but now I'm like, I see you. You know, don't you? Yep, I know. And it's just this. This is like I said. This is why when you you really do need to go with your intuition. And what you feel that you need to, to to do. It's like the connection with myself and Nikki to why yes. this, this is. There's, there's a lot more we can't fit in today. I know. <laughs> there's a it's, huge it's amount of conversation. Time, yeah. Never enough time. No, there's there's huge where this could go, but it's just to realize that to, to go with that gut instinct, because when you trust, truly trust. Uh, it, it's amazing what comes to you. It's the synchronicities, and you will have seen that with just us talking today. The fact that we have never met, we have never had a conversation I, already. You can see that it's divinely ordained. Absolutely right. And what a beautiful time we've had together. It's been yeah. amazing, my little soul sister, <laughs> my little Metatron groupie. Yes, totally. Yeah. There That's is. really weird. I've just had an email come up and it's just literally come up with Animal Kingdom, Disney. I, I don't know if that's Big Brother or it's just complete synchronicity. That's so weird. You know, you get things come up on your computer. I'm like, that's really weird. Animal Kingdom's just flashed up. They're emailing me most probably asking me to go back on the Avatar ride and I go, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's been a, an amazing, wonderful conversation. And yes, it has. I really hope that we can do something again further down the line because I think we've got a lot of other things to discuss and we can be doing. That I've got in my head there's a lot of things that we we can be doing. and Let's we need do to, it. We need, yeah, we need to discuss off camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, darling. 
<laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, Nikki. Just uh, I'll just say goodbye and thank you very much for for appearing and thank you for answering my email. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay. Don't disappear anywhere, Nikki. I'll just finish the recording. Thank you.